Hi, hello there. On this video lecture, we will be talking about fabric technologies. So a fabric topology needs individual switches together. So they behave like one switch. Okay, so but you still maintain the flexibility of individual switches and stacks. So fabric networking can give you warm, comfortable feeling in a lot of ways. So the fabric makes it easy to manage lots of switches. So data can take different paths through the switching ports of the fabric. And switches can take over for each other if a fellow fabric switch has problems. So the use of fabrics in a campus networks is relatively new. So there may be some confusion about whether they are the same as the network fabric or switching stack or switching chassis? The answer is no, no, no. Okay, so but what is a fabric? Okay, so fabric is simply an overlay network. Overlays are created through encapsulation, a process which adds additional headers to the original packet or frame. An overlay network creates a logical topology used to virtually connect devices that are built over an arbitrary physical underlay topology. So in an idealized theoretical network, every device would be connected to every other devices. So in this way, any connectivity or topology imagined could be created. So while this theoretical network does not exist, there is still a technical desire to have all of these devices connected to each other in a full mesh. So this is where the term fabric come from. Okay? So it is a cloth where everything connected together. Okay? So in networking, an overlay or tunnel provides the full logical mesh connection. So now you have already an idea of why is it called fabric technologies. Okay? Now on this chapter, this covers the following content. So the fabric technologies in Cisco includes the software defined access or SD access and the software defined one or SD one. Okay. So this section defines the benefits of SD access over traditional campus networks, as well as the components and features of the Cisco SD access solution, including the nodes, fabric control plane and data plane. Okay. Now for the software defined one, this section defines the benefits of SD1 over traditional ones, as well as the components and features of the Cisco SD1 solution, including the orchestration plane, management plane, control plane, and data plane. So these are the coverage of our discussion. All right, so software defined access or SD access. So introducing an entirely new era in networking. So Cisco Software Defined Access or SD Access is a solution within Cisco Digital Network Architecture or the Cisco DNA, which is built on intent-based networking principles, provides a transformational shift in building, managing and security networks, making them faster, easier to operate, and with improved business efficiency. So by decoupling network functions from hardware, it creates a virtual overlay over the underlying physical networking infrastructure. Okay, so SD access helps ensure policy consistency by providing an authorized access and containing breaches, enabling faster launches of new business services and significantly improving issue re uh, resolution. Okay, so while being open, extensible, and reducing operational expenses. So digital transformation is forcing the enterprises to search for new ways to enable digital capabilities, deliver IT services, and manage assets. So we're moving toward a very different world. And we need a very different network to get us there. Okay? All right, so what are the features of the SD access. Okay. 
So with SD access, an involved campus network can be built that addresses the needs of existing campus networks by leveraging the following capabilities, features, and functionalities. So the first one is network automation. Okay, so this is new in network. Okay, so network automation. This is an SD access replaces manual network device configurations with device management through a single point of automation, orchestration, and management of network functions through the use of the Cisco DNA Center. Okay, so the next one is network assurance and analytics. So SD access enables proactive prediction of network related and security related risks by using telemetry to improve the performance of the network endpoints and applications including encrypted traffic okay so next feature is host mobility so sd access provides host mobility for both wired and wireless clients and the cisco ice or the identity services engine it identifies users and devices connecting to the network and provides the contextual information required for users and devices to implement security policies for network access control and network segmentation. Okay, so the benefits, of course, you've got the enhanced visibility by using advanced analytics for user and device information or identification and compliance. So employ artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to classify similar endpoints into logical groups. Okay, so leverage policy analytics by a thorough analysis of traffic flows between groups and use it to define the right group-based access policies. Define, author, and enforce these policies using a simple graphical user interface or GUI. Okay? So next is you've got the policy enforcement. Okay? Now, under policy enforcement, so this is the traditional access control lists okay so which can be difficult to deploy maintain and scale because they rely on ip addresses and subnets okay so creating an access and application policies based on group based policies using a security group access control lists or the sgacl or the sgs or they, they call it s gackles okay which provides a much simpler and more scalable form of policy enforcement based on identity instead of an IP address. All right? So next is secure segmentation. So with SD access, it is easier to segment the network to support guests, corporate facilities, and IoT-enabled infrastructure. And the last one, for segment to secure by automatically getting up both wired and wireless network devices for granular two-level segmentation for complete zero trust security and regulatory compliance okay now the last one is network virtualization so this is an era where everything is virtualized okay everything is segmented and everything is based on the policy enforcement okay so exchange operating policies and ensure their consistency throughout the access one and multi-cloud data center networks by utilizing the cisco intent based networking multi-domain architecture so under network virtualization the sd access makes it possible to leverage a single physical infrastructure to support multiple virtual routing and forwarding or the vrf instances so referred to as the virtual networks or vns so it's with a distinct set of access policies. So this is a huge new technology that needs to be embraced by those professionals involved in the field of networks. Okay. Now let's talk about the SD access or the software defined access. So what is this? Okay. So um, SD access has two main components the Cisco Campus Fabric Solution, and the Cisco DNA Center, okay? Now, for the Cisco Campus Fabric Solution, so the Campus Fabric is a Cisco validated fabric overlay solution that includes all the features and protocols, control plane, data plane, management plane, and policy plane 
to operate a network infrastructure. Okay, so the SD access is a campus fabric plus the integration of the Cisco DNA Center. Okay, now what is the Cisco DNA Center? So the Cisco DNA Center, when the campus fabric solution is managed via the Cisco DNA Center, the solution is considered to be an SD access as illustrated in the figure here. Okay, now open platform for internet-based networking. So that's DNA Center. This is a complete software-based networking automation and Azure and solution. So it's the dashboard for control and management of our intent-based networking solution, the Cisco DNA. So SD access automates user and device policy for any applications across wireless and wired network via a single network fabric. So and SD access, it's a transformational shift Okay, it allows IT to set network access in minutes for any users, devices, or applications without compromising on security. So why do we have to use a Cisco SD access then? So there are many challenges today in managing the network because of manual configuration and fragmented tool offerings. So manual operations are slow and error prone, and these issues are exacerbated due to constantly changing environment, okay? With more users, devices, and applications. So with the growth of users and different devices types coming into the network, configuring user credentials and maintaining a consistent policy across the network is even more complex. So if our policy is not consistent, there is the added complexity of maintaining separate policies between wired and wireless. Okay, so as user moves around the network, locating the users and troubleshooting issues also become more difficult. So the bottom line is that the networks of today do not address today's network needs. That is why we need this SD access. All right, it's a cool feature okay promised by sd access and that can be solved by the implementation of this okay okay so let's talk about the sd access architecture so a cisco digital network architecture the cisco dna is cisco's architecture for the enterprise networks across the campus branch wide area network and extended enterprise so it provides an open extensible and software-driven approach that makes the network simpler to manage and more agile and responsive to business needs. Okay, so the Cisco DNA Center centrally manage major configurations and operations workflow areas. All right, so basically the architecture comprises of four layers, namely, you've got a physical layer wherein our switches, routers, wireless, the Cisco DNA Center and the Cisco Eyes is located. Okay, so if you look at this architecture, it looks like a complex one. But if you will observe, we already have the redundant okay components on it, which make it simple. I mean, Cisco DNA Center is also on the controller layer. The ISE, or they call it Eyes Identity Service Engine, is also part of the physical layer. So these two components here is basically on the controller layer. So the device itself is on the physical layer, but the functionality of the Cisco DNA Center and the Cisco Eyes is on the controller layer. All right? So um, basically the physical layer and the controller layer pertaining to Cisco DNA Center and the Cisco Eyes is the same. All right? Now, on the network layer, this is where the SD access overlay network using LISP, VXLAN, and CTS is implemented. So on the network layer, you've got the overlay network and the underlay network settings and protocols. Okay, so we are going to cover in details about these layers here. Now, on the management layer, this is basically your Cisco DNA Center. Okay, so take note that the Cisco DNA Center the device itself or the hardware is on the physical layer. 
the functionality or the controller is on the controller layer and basically the GUI okay driving the Cisco DNA setter is on the management layer so the graphical user interface where the administrators interact is basically on the GUI of the Cisco DNA setter and discovers the base automation design policy provision and assurance okay so this is what you can see on the dashboard of the Cisco DNA Center all right now for the design configures device global settings network site profiles for physical device inventory DNS DHCP IP addressing the swim repository device templates and telemetry configurations such as syslog SNMP and NetFlow can be configured on the design okay now on policy it defines business intent including creation of virtual networks assignment of endpoints to virtual networks policy contract definition okay so for groups and configures application policies QoS or quality of service okay so provision Provisions devices and adds them to inventory for management. Support Cisco plug and play. Creates fabric sites along with other SD access components and provides service catalogs such as the Stealth Watch, Security Analytics, and the application hosting on Cisco Catalyst 9000 series switches. Okay? So for the assurance, so it enables a proactive monitoring and insights to confirm user experience meets configured intent using network, client, and application health dashboards. Issue management, sensor-driven testing, and the Cisco AI network analytics. Now on the platform, okay, so it allows program uh, programmatic, okay, access to the network and system integration with third-party systems via APIs by using feature set bundles, configurations, a runtime dashboard, and a developer toolkit. So if you will observe, everything that we need on the configurations, enforcing policy, provisioning, assurance, all right? So everything is located on a GUI of a Cisco DNA Center, all right? now the cisco eyes okay so what is the purpose of the cisco eyes here or the is or the identity services engine okay so the cisco identity services engine or eyes is a secure network access platform enabling increased management awareness control and consistency for users and devices accessing the organization's network so eyes is an integral and mandatory component of sd access for implementing network access control policy so ice performs policy implementation enabling dynamic mapping of users and devices to scalable groups and simplifying end-to-end -end security policy enforcement so this is a cool feature integrated into the sd access architecture you can track the users and their devices all right isn't it great that's a nice feature okay now let's get into the details all right so on the physical layer of the sd axis okay so this includes cisco switches cisco routers cisco wireless and the cisco controller appliances okay now this cisco controller appliances includes the dna center okay and the cisco eyes so these are the two controller appliances required on the implementation of the sd axis okay on the Cisco wireless, we are using the Cisco uh, wireless LAN controllers and the access points, which provides wireless LAN access to the fabric. Okay. On the routers, so routers provide one and branch access to the fabric. So multiple types of Cisco ASR1000, ISR, and CSR routers, including the CSRV and the ISRV cloud routers are supported. On the switches, so switches provide wired LAN access to the fabric. So multiple types of Cisco switches or the catalyst switches are supported as well as the Nexus switches. So this comprises the physical layer. Okay, so basically it is a tangible component or the hardware part of the SD 
access layer. Okay, so let's move on onto the next layer. So which is the network layer? Okay, so the network layer consists of an underlay network and an overlay network. So these two sub layers work together to deliver data packets to and from the network devices participating in the SD access. So all this network layer information is made available to the controller layer. Okay, so the network underlay is the underlying physical layer and its sole purpose is to transport data or data packets between the network devices for the SD access fabric overlay. Now the overlay network is a virtual tunneled network that virtually interconnects all of the network devices forming a fabric of interconnected nodes. So it abstracts the inherent uh, complexities and limitations of the underlay network. So basically, if you are worried about the careers for the professionals on the networking field, okay, so the underlay is basically the traditional networks that we used to know. Okay, so the underlay network is still the networkings that we have in the past. It's just that the overlay network is operating over the underlay network. So this is the physical network here, and you've got the virtual network there. All right, so you have nothing to worry about. Okay, so this is not a threat for us administrators or network professionals. All right, so still, there is an underlay network for us to, to concentrate and work with. Okay? Now, there are two models for the underlay that are supported. Okay? So these are a manual underlay or the automated underlay. Okay? So basically, traditional network or traditional networking is in there. Okay? So under the underlay network. So it's not a threat for a traditional network professional. So there's a job security on it. All right. So um, for this one, okay, so why is it there is a need for the underlay manual and automated? Okay. So basically for the manual underlay, so this type of underlay network is configured and managed manually, such as with the CLI or the API, the REST API. Okay. So rather than choose Cisco DNA Center, an advantage of the manual underlay is that it allows customization of the network to fit any special design requirements, such as changing the IGP to OSPF. Okay, so it allows SD access to run on top of a legacy or third party IP based network. Right? So if you still want to use OSPF, then you go to manual overlay. Okay, so because there are some organizations or many of the organizations. Do not just want to go to a fully automated overlay, right? So they are afraid, okay, because the operations of the company lies on it. Okay, so that is why still there is a manual underlay. Okay. Now for the automated underlay, so in a fully automated network underlay, all aspects of the underlay network are configured and managed by the Cisco DNA Center LAN automation feature. Okay, so the LAN automation feature creates an ISIS routed access campus design. Do you remember ISIS? So from your CCNA, we mentioned ISIS. But did you know that this ISIS, okay, is making a huge comeback? Okay, it's been 15 years or more or so, okay, that we have used and heard about ISIS. So ISIS is a recommended automated underlay IGP. Okay. So um, if you don't know what an ISIS is, or if you don't know how to configure an ISIS, maybe it's time for you to start working and start studying. Okay. The ISIS, especially those who are not uh, familiar with it. Okay. Because it is the recommended uh, IGP protocol. Okay. For the automated underlay so it uses the cisco network plug and play features to deploy both unicast and multicast routing configuration in the underlay to improve traffic delivery efficiency for the sd access so an automated underlay eliminates misconfigurations and reduces the complexity of the network overlay or the network underlay sorry 
So it also greatly simplifies the needs okay, and speeds the building of the network underlay. So a downside of an automated underlay is that it does not allow manual customization for special design requirements. All right. So that's the disadvantage of it. Okay. Now for the network. Okay. So are there any or still the implementation of the layer two STP? Okay. We have sort of what you call the MAC address routing. Are you familiar with that? Well, Maybe it's a, uh, a reality in here, okay? So manual or automated, well, again, this will fully depend on the administrator. If he wants to customize the configuration, okay, so changing the IGP to SPF, then it is recommended that he has to go with the manual underlay. Or if he wants to rest everything to the Cisco DNA center, then he must choose the automated underlay. All right. Okay, now let's talk about the overlay network. So we defined earlier, an underlay is still the traditional network that we have. Okay, so there is what you call a job security because we still have the underlay network. Now, what is an overlay network? So the SD access fabric is the overlay network and it provides policy-based network segmentation, host mobility for wired and wireless hosts and enhance security beyond the normal switching and routing capabilities of a traditional network. So in SD access, the fabric overlay is fully automated as mentioned earlier. Okay, so regardless of the underlay network model used manual or automated, it includes all necessary overlay control plane protocols and addressing as well as global configurations associated with the operation of the SD access fabric. Okay. So there are four basic planes of operation and the SD access fabric. So basically you've got the control plane. Okay. So the control plane messaging and communication protocol between infrastructure devices in the fabric. Okay. And it uses the locator ID separation protocol or LISP. Okay. Next is the data plane. So the data plane encapsulation method used for data packets, and this is based on the VXLAN or the virtual extensible LAN. Okay. So next is a policy plane. So this is based on the Cisco trust set. So policy plane is used for security and segmentation. And the last one is the management plane, orchestration, assurance, visibility, and management. Okay. So this is totally new and this is a cutting edge technology here. Okay. So the idea behind Lisp is an easier way to quickly track the end users and their devices in our infrastructure. So we are going to actually circumvent the routing table and we're going to very quickly locate those entities with Lisp. Now the VXLAN, okay will gonna give us a super hyper scalable way to do VLANs, eliminating tons of advantages or disadvantages of a traditional VLANs like spanning tree approach. Okay. All right, so next, let's talk about the SD access control plane. So in many networks, the IP address associated with an endpoint defines both its identity and its location in the network. In these networks, the IP address is used for both network layer identification, who the device is on the network, and as the network layer locator, where the device is and in the network or to which device it is connected. So this is commonly referred to as addressing following topology. Okay, so while an endpoint location is the networks, okay, in the network will change who this device is and what it can access should not have to change. Okay. The locator ID separation protocol or LISP allows the separation of identity and location through a mapping of this two namespaces an endpoint identity or the EID in relations to its routing locator or our lock. All right. 
So let's dramatically simplify traditional routing environments by eliminating the need for each router to process every possible IP destination address and route. So it does this by moving remote destination information to a centralized mapping database called LISP Map Server or the MS. Okay, a control plane node and the SD access. So which allows each router to manage only its local routes and query the map system to locate the destination EIDs. So this technology provides many advantages for Cisco SD access, such as smaller routing tables, dynamic host mobility for wired and wireless endpoints, which is a common problem, and addressing agnostic mapping, IPv4, IPv6, and or MAC address, and built-in network segmentation through VRF instances. Okay, so this is a totally new idea, a totally new concepts of networking. Okay. Next, how about the SD access fabric data plane? Okay, so on the data plane, as I mentioned earlier, this is where the VXLAN is situated. Okay, so the tunneling technology used for data fabric data plane is based on the virtual extensible LAN or VXLAN. Okay, so the VXLAN is an uh, encapsulation technique for data packets. So when encapsulation is added to these data packets, a tunnel network is created. So tunneling encapsulates data packets from one protocol inside a different protocol and transports original data packets unchanged across the network. So a lower layer or same layer protocol from the OSI model can be carried through this tunnel, creating an overlay. Okay, so in SD access, this overlay network is referred to as fabric. Okay, now the VXLAN is a map in IP encapsulation method. So it provides a way to carry lower layer data across higher layer infrastructure or the layer tree infrastructure to be exact. So unlike routing protocol tunneling methods, the VXLAN preserves the original Ethernet header from the original frame sent from the endpoint. So this allows for the creation of an overlay at layer two and layer three, depending on the needs of the original communication. So for example, wireless LAN communication, which is IEEE 802.11, uses a layer two datagram information MAC address. Okay, so to make bridging decisions without a direct need for layer three forwarding logic. Okay. All right, so the next one is the SD access fabric plane. So it's still the continuation of the previous slide. So the original VXLAN specification was enhanced for SD access to support the Cisco TrustSec scalable group tags or SGTs. Okay, so this added new field to the first four bytes of the VXLAN header in order to transport up to 64,000 SGT tags. So the new VXLAN format is called the VXLAN group policy option or the VXLAN GPO. Okay, and it is defined in the IETF draft JobSmith VXLAN Group Policy 05. So the new fields in the VXLAN GPO packet format includes the following. You've got the group ID, the group-based policy extension bit, the don't learn bit, and the policy applied bit. Okay. Okay, so the next one is the policy plane. Okay, and from the diagram presented earlier, we identified the policy plane with the Cisco Trust Sec. Okay. Now, what is this Cisco Trust Sec? Okay. The Cisco Trust Sec decouples access that is based strictly on IP addresses and VLANs by using logical groupings in a method known as Group Based Access Control or the GPAC. Okay. The goal of the Cisco Trust Sec technology is to assign an SGT value to packet at each ingress point into the network. So an access policy elsewhere in the network is then enforced based on this tag information. So an SGT okay, is a form of metadata and is a 16-bit value assigned by ICE or the identity server okay, in an authorization policy when user, device, or application connects to the network. The fabric BXLAN encapsulation method is actually used 
for both the data plane and policy plane. So in the policy plane, uh, an alternative forwarding attributes, the SGT value and the BRF values are encoded into the header and carried across the overlay. Okay. All right. So next is the SD fabric rules and components. Okay. So the operation of the SD access fabric requires multiple different device roles. So it's with specific set of responsibilities. So each SD access enabled network device must be configured for one or more of the five basic device roles in the fabric overlay. So this includes the control plane, the fabric border, the fabric edge node, the fabric wireless line controller, and you've got the intermediate node. So as shown in the diagram here, okay? You've got the fabric nodes, border, border nodes, the fabric edge nodes, the fabric intermediate nodes, okay? The fabric control plane nodes. And of course, on top of it is our DNA center with the eyes or Cisco eyes, all right? Now let's get into the details. So fabric edge nodes. So a fabric edge node provides onboarding and mobility services for wired users and devices, including fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers and access points. Okay, so it is a Lisp tunnel router or the XDR that also provides the Anycast gateway, endpoint authentication and assignment to overlay host pools, static or DHCP, as well as group-based policy enforcement for traffic to fabric endpoints. Okay, so the fabric edge first identifies and authenticates wired endpoints. That is through the 802.1x. Okay, so which is the Ethernet. In order to place them in a host pool, SVI, and VRF instances, and scalable group SGT assignment, it then registers the specific EID host addresses, that is MAC slash 32 IPv4 or slash 128 IPv6 with a control plane node. Okay, so a fabric edge provides a layer or a single layer to any cascade that is the same SVI with the same IP address on all the fabric edge nodes. So for its connected endpoints and also performs encapsulation and the encapsulation of host traffic to and from its connected endpoints. All right. Next, the fabric control plane nodes. Okay, so what do we have here? The fabric control plane node is a Lisp map server resolver or the MSMR with enhanced functions for SD access, such as fabric wireless and SGT mapping. So it maintains a simple host tracking database to map the EIDs to our locks. Okay, so that is where the fabric control plane nodes is situated. And this is where the Lisp map server or the resolver with enhanced function or enhanced function is placed. All right, so mapping, Okay, is considered to be in the fabric control plane nodes. Okay, so the next one is the fabric border nodes. Okay, so what do we have on the fabric border nodes? So these are less proxy tunnel routers or the PXTRs that connects external layer three networks to the SD access fabric and translate reachability and policy information such as VRF and SGT information. Okay, this is from one domain to another. So there are three types of border nodes. You've got the internal border, the default border, which is the outside. Internal is the rest of the organization. And internal plus default border, which is by default set to anywhere. Okay, so the next one is the fabric wireless controller or the WLC. So a fabric enabled wireless LAN controller connects access points and wireless endpoints to the SD access fabric. So the WLC is external to the fabric and connects to the SD access fabric through an internal border node defined earlier. Okay. So in the traditional wireless, okay, as you can see here in the diagram, the WLC is typically centralized. Okay. And all control plane and data plane Okay, so wireless client data traffic needs to be tunneled 
to the wireless LAN controller through the control and provisioning of wireless access points or cap pop. Okay. Now in SD access, the wireless control plane remains centralized. Okay. And the data or but the data plane is distributed using the VXLAN directly from the fabric enabled access points. Okay. So we have such huge improvement of the next generation of networks. Okay. Now the SD access fabric concept. So better understanding the benefits and operations of the Cisco SD access requires reviewing of the following concepts related to how the multiple technologies that are used by the SD1 solution operate and interact in SD access. So first, of course, when you say SD access, we're talking about the virtual network. Okay. Virtual network or VN provides virtualization at the device level. So using VRF instances to create a multiple layer tree routing tables. So VRF instances provide segmentation across IP addresses, allowing for overlapped address space and traffic segmentation. Okay. So next is host pool. A host pool is a group of endpoints assigned to an IP pool subnet in the SDAX fabric. Okay. So fabric edge nodes have switched virtual interfaces or SVIs for each host pool to be used by endpoints and users as their default gateway. Next is a scalable group. A scalable group is a group of endpoints with similar policies. The SD access policy plane assigns every endpoint or host to a scalable group using TrustSec or SGT tags. So assignment to a scalable group can be either static per public edge port or using dynamic authentication through AAA or radius using the Cisco eyes. Okay. And the last one is the Anycast or Anycast gateway. Okay. The Anycast gateway provides a pervasive layer three default gateway where the same SVI is provisioned on every edge node with the same SVI IP and MAC address. So this allows an IP subnet to be stretched across the SD access fabric. All right, next controller layer. Okay. So the controller layer provides all the management subsystems for the management layer. And this is all provided by the Cisco DNA center and the Cisco eyes. Okay. Now this figure here illustrates the different components that comprise the controller layer and how they interact with each other as well as with the campus fabric. Okay. So it uses an authentication for the eyes, all right? AAA radius or the EA poll. Okay. So for the assurance data platform, they are using HTTPS, NetFlow or Syslog. Okay. Now the SD fabric can be accessed via the Cisco DNA Center, okay, or the graphical user interface. And the automation network control platform is using the net configuration, SNMP or SSH. And to interact with the Cisco DNA Center, it uses the API. Okay. So everything here, okay, so the connections from the ICE appliance uses an API and also Within the DNA center, it uses an API to connect to the assurance network data platform onto the SD access fabric. Okay. So everything now lies on the use of the software. Okay. Next. Now for the controller layer subsystem. So this includes the Cisco network control platform, the Cisco network data platform, and you've got the Cisco eyes. Okay. Now on the NCP, this is a subsystem integrated directly into the Cisco DNA Center that provides all the underlay and fabric automation and orchestration services to the physical and network layers. Okay. Now for the network data platform, it is used for the collection or data collection and analytics and assurance subsystems that is integrated also on the Cisco DNA Center. Okay. Now the Cisco eyes. The basic role of the ICE is to provide all the identity and policy services for the physical layer and network layer. Okay. 
the ICE provides network access, control or NAC, and identifies services for dynamic endpoints to group mapping and policy definition in a variety of ways. Okay? Now on the management layer, now the Cisco DNA Center or the GUI that we use to manage everything here, okay, is the user interface or user experience layer where all the information from the other layers is presented to the user or to the administrator in the form of centralized management dashboard. So it is the intent-based networking aspect of the Cisco DNA. Okay, now the following are some of the Cisco DNA design tools. So you've got the network hierarchy, the network settings, image repository, and network profiles. Okay. So on the network hierarchy, it is used to set up geolocation, building, and floor plan details and associate them with a unique site ID. Okay, for the network settings, this is used to set up network servers such as DNS, DHCP, AAA, device credential, IP management, wireless settings. Okay, now for the image repository, this is used to manage software images and or maintenance updates, set version compliance, and download and deploy images. Now the network profiles used to define LAN, one wireless LAN connection profiles such as SSID and apply them to one or more sites. Okay. Now let's talk about the Cisco DNA policy workflow. The Cisco DNA policy workflow provides all the tools to logically define the Cisco DNA policies. So the following are some of the Cisco DNA policy tools. Okay, so you've got the dashboard, the group-based access control, the IP-based access control, the application, traffic copy, and the virtual network, okay, or the VN. Now for the dashboard, it comprises of the classifications or divisions of functions that we have mentioned and discussed earlier, okay. Now the group-based uh, access control is used to create group-based access control policies, okay? The IP-based access control is for the creation of an IP-based access control policy. The application is basically dealing with the quality of service, okay? So traffic copy use the encapsulation remote switch port analyzer or the ER span to copy the IP traffic between two entities to a specified remote destination for monitoring and troubleshooting purposes. Okay, and the last one is, of course, your virtual network. This is where you could set up the virtual networks and associate various scalable groups. All right, so the next one is the Cisco DNA provision workflow, which provides all the tools to deploy the Cisco SD access fabric. So this is an all-in-one solution okay and using the fabric technology so the following are some of the cisco dna provision tools that you can use devices fabrics fabric devices and the host onboarding all right now that we are done with the sd access the next technology on the fabric platform is the sd1 or the software defined one okay Now, Cisco currently offers two SD1 solutions. You've got the Cisco SD1 based on Viptela. Okay. So this is the preferred solution for organizations that require an SD1 solution with cloud-based initiatives that provides granular segmentation, advanced routing, advanced security, and complex topologies while connecting to the cloud instances. So the second one is the Meraki SD1. So this is the recommended solution for organizations that required unified threat management or UTM. Okay, so with SD1 functionality or that are existing Meraki or Cisco Meraki customers looking to expand to SD1. So UTM is an all-in-one security solution delivered in a single appliance and typically includes the following security features, firewall, VPN, intrusion prevention or IPS, antivirus, anti-spam, and web content filtering. Okay? Now, let us discuss the Cisco SD-1 based on the VIP Tela. 
So let me give you some background about the Cisco SD1 implementation. So maybe you know Viptela. Okay. So the SD1 based on the Viptela has four plane. You've got the data plane, the control plane, the management plane, and the orchestration plane. Okay. So Cisco SD1 is basically based on Viptela. So Cisco acquired the Viptela in 2017, which provides cloud-based SD1 solution. So this is recommended to be used in conjunction with the Cisco DNA Center that will allow you to leverage automation and virtualization capabilities. Okay, so within the Cisco SD1, we can break down this into the four planes as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so you've got the data plane, the control plane, the management plane, which you are probably familiar with or from traditional network models, and the fourth plane known as the orchestration plane. Okay, so this is essentially shared with the management plane. All right. Now, so there are four different solutions within the Cisco SD1 created to manage each of these four different planes. Okay, so first, is we have the Cisco V managed, okay, which is very simply the GUI interface for managing the Cisco SD1 solution. Okay, you've got the V manage for the user interface. All right, so this is where you perform the configuration, monitoring, and provisioning. Then there is Cisco's V bond, which controls the orchestration plane. Okay. So VBond, orchestration and provisioning. So it's the job of the VBond to understand how the network okay, is constructed and how to make sure all of the interconnected can work together. So one of the big capabilities is something that they call zero touch provisioning. What is zero touch provisioning? So this means that when the SD1 capable router is introduced in the network, the Cisco's V band can remotely provision the router from anywhere without the need for the administrators to take any actions at all. All right. So that's super helpful for us network administrator, right? Now the next one is the Cisco's uh, V smart. Okay. V smart, which resides within the control plane. This is true or referred to as the brain of the SD1 solution. Okay. So as we, we create policies and the V managed as an administrator creates those policies, the V smart component is responsible for the enforcement of these policies. Now those policies are also shared with the other SD1 routers and locations in our network. So route information from branch locations are received via the overlay management protocol or OMP. Okay. So this now can cause the known policies against these routes to control the traffic flow through the SD1 fabric. Okay. And finally, we have this uh, Cisco's V edge or the edge router. Okay. In the data plane, we have the actual LAN edge routers themselves, which are responsible for establishing the network and for forwarding traffic. Now these devices can be physical or virtual, or we have a combination of those. This SD1 capable of the edge router are referred to as the V-Edge routers. Okay, so this is how Cisco implemented their SD1, All right? Okay, so let's try to look at a very common way in case that we might see this implemented here we see a sample topology within which we have the main campus okay the a couple of branch locations right so physical data center and a cloud data center okay so all of these are interconnected through various means all right so you've got different technologies that interconnects these components now we see mpls all right uh lte or 4g Okay, so what else? 
you've got the satellite connection is possible also yeah okay now again remember that sd1 is an overlay technology and that provides transport independence so in other words it doesn't matter what the physical underlying network infrastructure is as we see there okay so um, sd1 can work any and all of that at each of these locations so we would have a LAN edge router a cisco v edge device and these routers from ipsec tunnels with each other in order to create the sd1 overlay network so this is going to make up the data plane that we discussed a bit earlier so also recall that all the control elements that we discussed earlier the cisco's v managed v bond v smart secure control channels would be established okay so that would be established between each of these elements and each one of LAN edge routers and that would be used for provisioning and for configuration of the devices all right Okay, so um, we already have mentioned and discussed this uh, components. Okay, so which is the V Manage V Smart Controller. Okay, V Edge. Okay, now the Cisco SD1 routers V Edge and C Edge. So what's the difference between these two? Okay, so there are two different SD1 router options available for the Cisco SD1 solution. So we've got the V Edge. This is the original Viptela platforms running on the Viptela software. Okay. And the C edge here is, of course, the Viptela software integrated with Cisco iOS. All right. So this is now when Viptela was acquired by Cisco. They call it C edge. All right. Okay. So a main differentiator between the SD1 C edge router and the V edge router is that the C edge router supports advanced security features. As demonstrated in this table because C edge came after Cisco has acquired the Viptela All right so they only differ in terms of advanced security features all right so next is the v-band orchestrator which authenticates the v-smart controller and the SD1 routers and orchestrates okay connectivity between them so it is the only device that must have a public IP address so that all the SD1 devices in the network can connect to it. So a V-band orchestrator is an SD1 router that only performs V-band orchestrator functions. Okay, so the major components of the V-band that we discussed earlier are the control plane connection, the NAT traversal, and load balancing. Okay, you also have the V-analytics. Okay, so V Analytics is an optional analytics and assurance service that has many advanced capabilities, including the visibility into applications and infrastructure across the one, forecasting and what if analysis, intelligent recommendations. So take note that the future of networks is now uh, automated, okay, and therefore with this one, it should be associated with the data analytics. We call it the V analytics. So this capabilities benefits the SD1 in ways that are not possible without V analytics. For example, if a branch office is experiencing latency or loss on its MPLS link, V analytics detects it and compare that legacy or latency or loss with information on other organizations in the area. That is also monitoring to see if they are also having the same issue in their circuits. So if they are, V analytics can then report the issue with confidence to the SPs. So V analytics can also help predict how much bandwidth is truly required for any location. So this aids in deciding whether a circuit can be downgraded to a lower bandwidth to reduce costs. See? So that's automation. Okay. Next, how about the Cisco SD Cloud on the RAM or on RAM? So traditional enterprise one architecture are not designed for the cloud as such. Okay. So as organization adopt more SaaS applications such as the Office 365 and public cloud infrastructure such as AWS and Microsoft Azure, 
The current network infrastructure poses major problems related to the level of complexity and end user's experience. So the Cisco SD1 solution includes a set of functionalities addressing optimal cloud SaaS application access and ES connectivity called cloud on ramp. All right. So the cloud on ramp delivers the best application quality of experience or QoE for SaaS applications by continuously monitoring SaaS performance across diverse paths and selecting the best performing path based on the performance metrics. Okay, so which includes jitter, loss, and delay. So in addition, it simplifies hybrid cloud and multi-cloud ES connectivity by extending the SD1 fabric to the public cloud while at the same time increasing high availability and scale. Okay, so they have the solution that you can use on any platform. Okay. All right, so figure here illustrates a remote site with dual direct internet access. Okay, so from two different ISPs or internet service providers. All right, so ISP1 and ISP2 leading to the SaaS or software as a service. Okay, so when the cloud on ramp for SaaS is configured for a SaaS application on vManage, the SD1 router at the remote site starts sending small HTTP probes to the SaaS application through both DIA circuits to measure latency and loss. So based on the results, the SD1 router will know which circuit is performing, in this case ISP2, and sends the SaaS application traffic out that circuit. Okay, so this is what you call intelligence. All right, intelligence adapted into networking. Okay, so now the figure here illustrates another example of cloud on ramp for SaaS. In this case, the remote site has a single DIA circuit to ISP1 and an SD1 fabric DTLS session to the regional hub. Okay. I have the regional hub here. Now, much as in the previous case, the cloud on ramp for SaaS can be configured on the vManage network management system or solution and become active on the remote site SD1 router. So, however, in this case, the cloud on ramp for SaaS also gets enabled on the regional hub SD1 router and is designated as the gateway node. So, quality proving service via HTTP towards the cloud SaaS application of interest it starts on both the remote site SD1 and the regional hub SD1. Okay. Now there is also the same functionality for the ES or infrastructure as a service. Okay. So with a Cisco SD1 solution, ubiquitous connectivity, zero trust security and end-to-end -end segmentation application of where QoS policies can be extended into an ES environment by using an SD1. Okay? So your your SD1 or the Cisco SD1 almost connects everything. Okay? Intelligently secure. Okay? You could you could even use the AWS DX and Microsoft Azure's ER. So you've got this compatibility with different platforms available. Right, so that ends up the video discussion. Thank you for listening and watching. Have a great day. See you on the next video.